Hey guys, it's Paul from Ashy Phoenix. It is new comic book day for the week of May 24th. We're going to get started right now. All right, gang, Tim from Capes and Scales in the comic book store. We're going to get started talking about trades. New this week, we've got Batman, New Gotham. Uh, this is the Greg Rucka run that took place in Detective Comics. I have read some of it, not all of it. Rucka's really good, though. We've got Moonshine, Volume 1, which is Brian Azzarello. He's also pretty good. We have On the Camino by Jason. Jason's a really good indie kind of writer-artist. I really enjoy him. Violent Love, Volume 1. It looked cool. I didn't read it. I'm not going to lie. Archer and Armstrong. Valiant's been uh, doing really good as of late. I mean, of course I love Moon Knight. Do I have to even say anything else about Moon Knight? I don't think I do. New volume of Deadpool. What? He's hugging Captain America on the back. Love is in the air. Mayday. I don't know anything about Mayday. <laughs> the Book of Magic. Ooh. This has something to do with Neil Gaiman, I believe. Mm -hmm. Continuing from acclaimed author Neil Gaiman's iconic graphic novel, but not actually featuring Neil Gaiman. No Mercy. Not just a fun wrestling game for your Nintendo 64. No Mercy. Volume 3. I didn't even know there was 1 and 2. I'm sorry, whoever wrote that. God, I feel like it's actually the campy. I think he wrote three of these books I just said. Sorry. All right, we've got Doctor Strange, Sorcerer Supreme. I read a little of this. I enjoyed it. Unworthy Thor. I read all of this, and I enjoyed it. That's also Jason Aaron. We've got a new volume of Hellblazer. A new old volume of Hellblazer. We've got The Dying and the Dead, which took a very long time to come out. It's Hickman. I haven't read it, but I like Hickman. We have Uncanny and Humans. How is this, Paul? Uh, odd. Odd. That's you want something odd by Charles Soule. There you go. And last but not least, this is an oldie but a goodie, Catwoman, When in Rogue, by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. It is the, the, the red-headed stepchild, I guess, of the long Halloween and dark victory and the long whatever the hell. This is... Part of that trilogy. And it's good. So read it. First up today, we have Ben Riley, The Scarlet Spider, issue number two. Um, I picked this up because obviously, like I said, I've said from the very first one, I love the art. It's vaguely art. Um, it's an interesting storyline because uh, Ben's not really that likable. Um, he's got a certain charm, and he's crazier than anything. But... Um, He's not likable, and I, I guess it's kind of like the endearing thing that I have about this book. Uh, he's conning people, he's just not a nice guy, but he's trying to get through his way. Uh, meanwhile, Kane is on his uh, on his trail, and it's just not looking good. It's going to, it, Obviously, there's going to be a big fight at some point between the clones, um, but it's going to be weird which one you're going to uh, kind of root for, because right now it's not Ben. Uh, it might actually be Kane, but... Uh, it's an interesting read. If you're a fan of the Spider-Man series, you'll pick this one up just to see how things are going. Um, if not, you can pass on it. All right, guys, we're going to start with Action Comics number 980. I have not been reading Action Comics, so I just dove right in. This is part two of the Revenge storyline. Part one, I believe, happened in Suicide Squad, which is probably also out today. I feel like that's correct. If not, it was last week. But anyways, this focuses on the cyborg Superman and Blank and... Metallo and the Eradicator all joining forces. And Mongol. Everybody likes Mongol. He wants War World. They're going to team up and try to take out Superman. But they need Zod's help to do it. So it involves them trying to infiltrate Amanda Waller's secret little base, which has this protective dome around it that has something to do with Zod. So, it has to do with the bad guys trying to get the Zod, Superman trying to get to the bad guys. Superman initially has no idea how bad it actually is, and it's kind of interesting because, at you know, first glance, this feels like a Spider-Man book in the sense that here's all these villains teaming up, and it feels very Sinister Six. Um, the story was good. I like the overall. I think as an overall story, it's going to be very good, but... This one was kind of like the middle ground. This probably wasn't the one to jump in on, but I think as a whole, the story will be pretty good. Um, so, yeah, I liked it. Action. 
Next up, Deathstroke, issue number 19, Zelazer's Contract, issue number 4. I hated this book. Um, if you read Deathstroke, I'm assuming that you're used to uh, the narration changes and the skips that they have in the stories. If you're not, this is a tough book to read. Um, and it's kind of tough, it's, it's kind of rough because you like the Lazarus contract and you're like to see how this thing's going and just have such a narration change, um, compared to the other two books is really tough to get through. Um, this changed points of view 15 different times. Um, and it, and it almost seemed like you're reading six or seven different stories. It, it just, it felt very broken. Uh, it barely felt even part of. Uh, the story itself. Um, only pick this up if you are either a fan of the Deathstroke series or if you really want to see how this Lazarus contract is going to end. Um, because otherwise, there's no reason to read this book. Um, it, it's just not. It's not great. I'm, I wasn't a fan of it. Um, no. All right, guys. Plastic, number two. If you saw my review of Plastic, number one, you know that this is a very bizarre graphic book. That is... Confirmed again in issue two. Your main character is the most intriguing main character because he has all these weird little uh, psychotic tendencies, but he seems to be a very righteous and good person, except he's a psychopathic murderer. Uh, he was set up to take the fall in a murder, and this issue kicks off with him dealing with the consequences of that. Uh, you see a little bit more of the world, and you see a little bit more of uh, the powers to be that he has to go up against. Um, really disturbing. He has some weird obsession with plastic. It might be why his girlfriend was blow up though in the first one. Um, this book is weird, but it is so gory and so good and just weird. So read it if you like weird, gory, horror kind of stuff. Why aren't you reading this? It's great. All right, guys, and that's it this week. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks to our new Patreon fans. Thanks to Adam. Thanks to thanks to Russ. Thanks to uh, Steely or Steepy. Sorry. Uh, we appreciate you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Subscribe to Capes and Scows channels. If you missed last week's uh, uh, reviews, you can check them out right here, or just check out some randomness over here. Anyway, guys, we will see you next week.